The UK Ministry of Defence MOD is exploring potential future airborne early warning solutions to operate from the Royal Navy's pair of Queen Elizabeth-class aircraft carriers. The solution is sought for the Navy's carrier strike groups, comprising the aircraft carrier, support vessels, escort frigates, and escort destroyers. According to MOD requirements, the system should provide persistent 24-hour surveillance and sufficient warning of both air and surface threats such as anti-ship guided weapons and strike aircraft. The Royal Navy's Crossnest Airborne Surveillance and Control, mounted on Merlin helicopters, is set for retirement at the end of 2029, only five years after achieving full operational capability. UK Ministry of Defence Investigating Future Carrier-Based Airborne Early Warning Capabilities The UK MOD issued a request for information for a new airborne surveillance system capable of operating from Queen Elizabeth-class aircraft carriers. In the request for information listing, the MOD objective is stated as to understand the capacity and capability of the industrial base to support this capability requirement. The deadline for industry submissions is May 6, 2025, and the follow-on tender process is expected by January 1, 2026. The eventual contract is then expected to run for a five-year period from approximately January 1, 2027, to May 1, 2032. Providing an airborne early warning capability for the Queen Elizabeth-class aircraft carriers and their carrier strike groups has been a hotly debated topic ever since the carriers were first ordered. Without catapults and arresting wires, the Royal Navy carriers are unable to operate aircraft like the E-2D Hawkeye, which is flown from U.S. Navy and French Navy carriers. Future airborne early warning capabilities are widely expected to be provided by unmanned aircraft. The Royal Navy Crossnest Airborne Surveillance and Control, mounted on Merlin helicopters, is set for retirement at the end of 2029, Merlin Crossnest had a protracted development process. Initial proposals in the early 2010 led to flight trials of two systems by 2014, with Thales proposal using a side-mounted radar in an inflatable radome, derived from those used on the Sea King, selected the following year. The radar is mechanically scanned, and is an updated model of the Searchwater 2000 radar originally employed by the Nimrod MR2. It wasn't until 2021 that the first airframe entered service, just in time to deploy with the Carrier Strike Group 21 deployment. However, initial operating capability IOC was not declared until 2023, a full five years after the last Sea King was withdrawn. Vigilance, the rival system offered by Lockheed Martin, would have seen the Merlin equipped with smaller, static pods mounted on both sides of the aircraft containing active electronically scanned array radars. A version using arrays derived from the F-35 Lightning II. The carrier platform for the future airborne early warning system has not been decided on yet. However, it could be an unmanned aerial vehicle such as the General Atomics MQ-1C Mojave Short Takeoff and Landing Stole Unmanned Aerial System UAS, which was tested on board aircraft carrier HMS Prince of Wales in 2023. Additionally, an stole-capable MQ-9B UAS was also announced for development by General Atomics in 2022. Both the General Atomics aircraft could be mounted with the future airborne early warning system. They would provide a wider radar horizon than helicopters due to higher altitude. Advanced radar systems can be integrated onto these UAV and pods, but weight limitations for stole are a consideration that must be taken into account. If funding would allow, the Royal Navy's preferred option would seem to be the retrofitting of the carriers to accommodate electromagnetic catapults and arresting wires. This would not be a full conversion of the ships from Stavel to Katobar, but a hybrid option. Various proposals exist, ranging from short catapults for drone launches only, through to large systems suitable for manned fighter aircraft. These would then allow larger unmanned platforms with greater payload capacity, potentially even jet-powered with increased speed and altitude performance. An additional option, though perhaps further into the future, is the provision of airborne early warning from platforms that are not organically generated by the carrier or task group. Systems like the Airbus Zephyr, which are sometimes referred to as pseudo-satellites, are electronically driven using solar cells for electricity generation. They can stay airborne for days, weeks, or even months, at a time, operating at altitudes in excess of 70,000 feet. Currently, the major limitation of these designs is the payload capacity. 
Most of the airframe's weight allowance is taken up by the large number of batteries required to sustain flight overnight, meaning the usable payload is only a few kilograms nowhere near enough for an airborne early warning radar system. Regardless of the option chosen, having the system procured, delivered, and declared operational by 2029 is an extremely ambitious target, and the natural fallback option is to extend the service life of Merlin Crossness to compensate. On the face of it, this is a simple proposition, as the Merlin itself is currently expected to stay in Royal Navy service until 2040. However, the limited Merlin HM-2 fleet is already stretched under the combined weight of its anti-submarine warfare, airborne early warning, and general maritime helicopter tasks. A life extension will be required to keep the airframes not only up to date but generally airworthy, and as the helicopters rotate through this lengthy process the total fleet numbers will drop even further. One saving grace could be the introduction of the Leonardo Proteus Rotary Wing UAS, which is expected to begin flight trials this year. Proteus could not completely replace the Merlin, but it could provide the additional mass required to cover gaps in anti-submarine warfare provision. The British carrier's lack Catobar catapult-assisted takeoff barrier arrested recovery, which allows an aircraft carrier to launch and receive bigger manned and unmanned aircraft. Because of that, the service is without traditional AWACS systems such as the E-2 Hawkeye. Each of the vessels operates a maximum of 36 F-35B, capable of short takeoff and vertical landing. Under the future Maritime Aviation Force concept, the service intends to move from stall to stall, then to short takeoff but arrested recovery stowbar and then to catobar. The purpose of this market research event is to research the skills, technologies, and products the marketplace has to offer around de-risking development of the Carrier Strike Airborne Early Warning System and MOD request for information reads. Responses are sought by May 6 with a follow-on tender expected by January 1, 2026. An eventual contract is expected to be awarded in January 2027, with completion in May 2032. The contract's estimated value will be between 500 million and 1.5 billion pounds, 654 million dollars and 1.93 billion dollars. Future airborne early warning capabilities are widely expected to be provided by unmanned aircraft.